Well, first off, I guess you're supposed to get into the safety. And so, you know, use your use your your backstop and your or your pardon me, your your tail stock and your face mask and your dust mask and all that stuff and play carefully. This particular piece was a two by two by two and a half and I just stuck it in the chuck and I drilled into the base of it to uh, to create the hole for the stopper to go into. Um, this is what it looks like after a while. You get this mounted in your lathe and kind of round it off a bit. Drill your holes and then you can go into this with this to create threads if you need to. Um, we'll get into that a little later. Um, the uh, drill sizes that you're going to need for this whole process are 5 16 or 11 16 or even 21 64 each, that's a little bit higher, but that's for harder woods. Harder woods are hard to get these things started into. With the uh, with the uh, with the tap there, it makes it a lot easier. Uh, you can make a, a little dimple on the base of these with a with a seven eighths drill, and then this is be inset a little bit. You don't have to worry quite as much about it it lining up properly at the bottom. Um, if you make it a very small bottom on it, it might show a little bit of crookedness to it, then, then you've got trouble. If you've got that little dimple, and that dimple you can only go about uh, uh, 16th to an eighth of an inch, other than that you're going to interfere with your bottle. Um, if it's deeper than that, it might come down and bump against this. Most of these fit in there pretty good, but if you made it too deep, it would catch on your bottle, so that's what would create that problem. If you want to make a toque like this with your stopper well inside, you need an inch and three eighths to uh, to drill down there, and uh, I'll get into that a little bit later. Now your mandrels, there's several ones you can use. I made this particular piece myself. Uh, it's uh, It's a 3 8 bolt. You drill a hole through this piece of wood. Um, and start it all off in the mandrel with, and, and, or pardon me, in the, in the headstock, uh, your chuck, and round this off. Hook your chuck onto here, and then drill your hole, and cut this on here. Now, the, the use of that, is for turning it around and putting, well once you get the bolt in, you'll know whether it's running straight or not. And it's not. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much guaranteed. So then you figure it out, you turn this a little bit in your chuck, till it is more, more or less straight. Then you turn this, put this into your chuck, so it's grabbing it, and then round this off, and you're going to be pretty close. Except if it's humid out or something like that. It's a real pain. If anybody wants this, they can have it. <laughs> it's, uh, I uh, put a washer on here and tightened it up with a bolt and used a file on it to make it the same size as the top of the bottle stopper so that, that you've, got, you've got something to show you where you should be cutting on that. Um, when I got rid of that, I purchased a mandrel like this. It's uh, it's a little handier. It's got a slot in here that you can use to create threads in your in your um, in your wood in this part of the wood. Just twist it on, and it gives you good threads. But you twist twist it on, then twist it off a couple times while you're doing it, so that the the uh, wood isn't in there jamming up the threads and that while you're doing it. Get it tightened right down to here and then take it off once or twice just to clear all the wood and crap out of there because otherwise you might get a build up in there or if you get it too tight there and turn your piece down a lot then all of a sudden you've got a hard time getting it off the chuck in the, or off the mandrel later. Um, this worked pretty good for a while. Just stuck it in my in my uh, headstock in my, my, my lathe and uh, 
I started having troubles with it wandering out. Well, you're supposed to have a one quarter inch rod going into here, threaded into here to hold it in place. Well, but my vacuum system on there created a problem for that. I didn't like taking it off each time because then I couldn't get the rod in. So I took this to my machinist and he cut this in it so this can be grabbed by my, by my chuck and then it's just running in the right spot all the time. Two more things you can do is if you've got a chuck like this, you can put your, take the head off the bolt, put it in there. I use two nuts to adjust it here so that it, um, I've got half an inch here because that's what we need to put the, the, um, that's what we need to put the, the uh, stopper on that far into the wood. Okay? You know what I mean? Any questions? Okay. Um, you can be adjusted a little bit. This one's got a tiny, tiny wobble in it, but if you put that little bit of a dimple here so it won't be seen, it's, it works. You can also use it in your drill chuck, basically the same thing. Comes out easy and then you, know, you can mount this in your headstock. My favorite is this one. It's threaded to fit on the on the on the lathe. It just goes on, goes on tight. It's got a little bit of a washer that makes things a little bit easier to take off, and it's got this slot to to put the threads into the wood. Uh, now, one good thing about these is you can also use them to uh, make bottle openers. This is a bottle opener. I don't know if you've ever seen one like this. It just goes pop until late at night. Sometimes it goes. But <laughs> 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 you get it sooner or later. Uh, now, for drilling the hole, the initial hole in the piece of wood, so that you can attach it onto one of your one of your pieces, I use a very short a drill, three eighths drill. It's short and it's stocky, and it won't wobble as much. Uh, it's, it makes a good cut. I've got it marked so that it goes in about five eighths of an inch. You want to have five eighths of an inch because the stoppers are half an inch in and you want to have a little bit of air space at the base so that it doesn't move as much when you get moisture changes and that sort of thing. Okay, going on, this, this I used in the, in the headstock, in the chuck, I mean, and uh, just shape this like this, and then when I get past that, then I thread it onto here, and then you can cut this off and do your finish. But you can also finish this just in your chuck because, you know, it's, uh, depending on the shape you want and all that sort of thing, you can do it in your chuck. Okay, um, now the blank is two by two by two and a half. Drill the hole must be square to the stopper. So you want to keep this square when you use it on the drill press or drill a hole in it from your from your tailstock on your on your lathe. Um, the hole, and then you just carry on. It's um, there's a lot of different shapes you can come up with. Uh, you know, this is a pretty good challenge. I did this one this morning, and uh, it's uh, it's quite a challenge. Now the brass, you can also get brass threaded inserts that will that will uh, fit into your wood, but you need a 33 64 drill hole in here, about a little over half an inch deep. And then you can thread all your stoppers right into that brass thing. And then you can make 10 different stopper tops and just screw them in each time you want to use them if you want to have a number of different stoppers. Um, the toque is, uh, uh, the blank was three by two and a half by two and a half, a one and three eighths drill, one and a half inch deep. 
and then you have to carry on uh, with an 11 30 seconds for about five eighths deep to seat your chuck into it. It's uh, it's fun getting that uh, stopper in there if you go with a smaller size hole because uh, it's a tight turn in there and you've got no, no finger room in there at all. Uh, when you're taking the, the chuck or when, you, when you're taking the stopper top off of off of these things, off your mandrel, it can be very difficult. So sometimes you can do it with a rubber glove, sometimes with two rubber gloves, and just wrap them around it and try to pull them off. But quite often they use this chunk of old rubber off a, a tractor tire and just wrap it around there and grab a hold of it with this. But make sure you got pretty good <laughs> rubber on there. Otherwise you're starting to pull. It's very soft in the middle. I've, I don't know how many times I've uh, uh, been started turning it and has a little bit of a catch in back. You're starting over again because it takes out all the threads inside. So the other day I was trying to figure out, you know, how can I stop that? And I, I put a little bit of CA glue in there and left it for about 10 minutes and then put it on my mantle. And it was sticking pretty good. <laughs> and I took it off and my threads and my my the slot here for, for taking looking after the garbage wood in there were full and packed hard. And it took me about 45 minutes with a really good sharp tools to get that out of there. What I find Gord is uh, when I'm doing that I'll uh, use a CA glue. And let, let it sit overnight or yeah. not touch it till the next day. Yeah, next time I'll leave it till Wednesday. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it works really well. I've done that a lot. Yeah. We've got softer woods, just yeah. lots of CA glue, get it good and coated, and then just leave it sit overnight. Yeah. And there's uh, a number of different looking stoppers here. This one's got a quite an outward portion on it. It's supposed to sit nicely, but it doesn't. Uh, this one has got five rings on it. It's supposed to be for hard liquor uh, bottles. It's a bit bigger than, than the ones like these are for wine. And some of these with four rings, the same type, are for wine, are, are for wine as well. Um, they just fit different size bottles. Like some wine bottles, these don't fit very far into, but this one just about goes all the way. This is a whiskey stopper, but it's, it's, it's right up there. Now on, on whiskey bottles and that, these are supposed to have two washers or two O-rings that, that, that seal it very well. Number of different places you can get these things. Uh, William Woodwright, I didn't even know they carried them until here lately. Uh, they've got some, they're a little bit tricky to find. Woodchuckers.com, they carry, they carry these as well. They're real asset. I think they're, I don't know, they're either 18 or 25. I don't remember which it was there. Um, it's, it's a good buy, I think. Uh, DFI is a stainless steel stoppers. They um, had a little bit of a squabble with them once, so I don't like them, but <laughs> you guys might get along with them better. They're in Quebec. And there's a company called Stainless Steel Stoppers in the States that makes good quality things. Um, they have mostly, mostly this type of stopper as well. I think they, I think they kind of make them for everybody. Uh, I know when uh, when they started selling them that Ruth Niles found somebody else to make her stoppers for. So I think that maybe uh, maybe there was a problem there. Now Ruth Niles is probably the one that you want to remember a lot about because she's got an excellent site, she's got a lot of pictures, she's got a lot of, uh, uh, of instructions and that. She, she's got instructions on how to make these and stoppers and, and the toque stopper and, and all that type of thing. She covers a lot of ground. Uh, she helped me get going on them basically because she had good instructions. So. Uh, she's worth looking at. You don't have to buy there or anything. Just have a look. The other thing, Gord, if people are going to do that, email her 
and find out exactly what she can put in certain standardized U.S. shipping boxes because yeah. you pay the same amount. Tell her what you want and say how many can you fit in that yeah. box. It's, it's wise she's to talk. She's really good to work with. She is. She's very good. Uh, these, these stoppers, the ones that that you guys are going to be getting today, are they fit into little vinegar jars and that sort of thing. So they have multiple purposes. Are they stainless? Yes. They're pure stainless, yeah. All of these are pure stainless. I don't, I don't like the chrome ones because the chrome ones <coughs> and red wine don't mix well, and I kind of mix fairly well with red wines. Anyways, the, it was fun. <laughs> uh, first, I just uh, filled a shallow hole with. Uh, just to create a good entrance point with it, I just took a very sharp, small drill and drilled just, just a little bit into it so that uh, my inch and three-eighths, inch and three-eighths, I think it is, um, yeah, one, one and three-eighths drill, and you go inch and a half in deep with that, but if you have a little starting point for it to start, it'll drill straighter, okay? And then, after that inch and, uh, inch and a half deep, then you go with 11 30 seconds and you measure that well, otherwise you're going to go through here. Just ask me. And because uh, it's, it's been done. And uh, it's, it's really quite simple. To thread that is a little bit of fun, but with this, with this good threading unit on these, it, uh, it does a really good job. You can, you can thread it on there quite decently. But if you went, you know, if you stuck with the smaller drill, like a, a, like a 5 sixteenths, you'd have trouble threading that on in there. So go with a little bit bigger. If it's really, really hard wood, then go up to a 21 64th. And I always put a little glue on, a little glue on the threading on the stoppers when I put it in there, just to make sure it holds good. Uh, I kind of like the idea of that brass thread inserts as well, but I just haven't got there yet. Um, there's no need for it really. <laughs> but if you want one stopper in your house and ten different tops for it, that's fine. That'd be a good way to go. Any questions? Any other questions? Yes. You haven't said too much about the the the, the top. Does the mandrels uh, thread tap it enough, or do you need to? Yeah, just a three-eighths tap. Okay. That's all you need. It's it's this this works pretty good. It makes it pretty easy, but uh, um, I I prefer using this. So that, yeah, that is three-eighths, sixteen teeth per inch. Right. And I just put it on the lathe, and my lathe turns quite slowly, so I'm okay with that. And I could just hold it and put it on. If it's really hard wood, you can use this to hold it in place to put it on there. But I always run it back and forth a couple times just to clear that crap out of there. Makes it a lot easier on you. Do you find any particular finish is better than another? Uh, <clears throat> I always seem to start with walnut oil. I'm kind of stuck on that stuff. And uh, I've got a, a walnut oil, shellac, and... Uh, and uh, microcrystalline wax that I put on there. And uh, I put on three coats. Of the, I put on the walnut oil and heat it in. I just hold on for friction and drive the oil in a little bit. And then I put on the wax. And, and, you, and I put on about three coats of it and I, and I heat, heat it after each one and let it cool in between so that it, uh, it sets better. It gives you a decent shine, but there's lots of different finishes you can use. Have you tried Wavon Poly? I'm sorry? Have you tried Wavon Poly? No, I haven't. I've, I've never re really worked with Poly at all. It's, it's very good stuff, I guess, but it's not well enough. What the hell? There's even a can opener that comes in from this supplier, and all it is is it's just kind of a flat cut here, but it, it just slides underneath the, 
the tab on it can lift it up and then it's easy to work with. So it's a very functional tool. <laughs> when did you get started? Did you oh, I've been doing this for about four or five years now. I think I've made about 160, somewhere around there. So there's some, some variety there. With the screw caps, are we are you getting some, uh, you know, it seems you go in a liquor store now, you see more and more screw cap wine bottles. Yeah, yeah. Is this going to be... Uh, it's a problem. Just make those two pumps go in the box. It's hard to sell. Well, there's no more questions. Thank you very much. Anybody want one of these?